Yeah, and so it was definitely a blast to work in. Um, it's unlike uh, other companies I've worked in, definitely not like the army. Um, it feels like you're at the center of attention as a researcher there. Um, really, the, the entire company is built on your um, discoveries and your ability to like hack into uh, mobile phones. Uh, not in, on an individual level, this was much more of a group effort than my experiences in Dojo. But uh, yeah, you, basically you have like a team which with very, very um, uh, skilled, uh, uh, like a set of very nice uh, and useful talents and they're able to uh, help you. And also uh, we split up the work and like each of us is maybe responsible for different parts of this uh, exploit chain. And I can say like on, on a more general level, like the NSO really uh, tries to keep uh, everyone very happy and uh, thinks about the tiny details of like how to make your day to day better. Uh, you have like a very like a personal assistant that um, if you need anything that they she can help you or uh, like resolve any issues you have. Um, you you know you have like this amazing kitchen. You have um, like. Uh, maybe every couple of months, like some fun activity you do together with other people and yearly uh, vacation, like a group, uh, uh, company uh, retreats. Uh, and this is also about like kind of building a, a story about uh, like being able to solve massive challenges. And in iOS, we were very, very close together. I, I was working primarily in the iOS uh, exploits and we really uh, became sort of a small family, you know, you could say, and you know, you know everyone, and uh, it's more like of you get your motivation from basically uh, seeing the success rather than like you, you don't think about your paycheck or like the conditions or anything like that. You know, you just like you want to make it work because it's important for you. It's like it's a very hard mental challenge. And also, you're part of a team, and you always want the team to win, right? If you if you manage to get uh, researchers on board and feeling like it's a team effort, then they can bring out their best uh, their best talents. Sounds pretty amazing. So it almost feels like a you're working on a passion project, and it's that challenge that you really crave and love uh, while you're working there. Yeah, it felt like that quite a bit, and obviously in a, in a like. From a professional perspective, it's one of the like toughest challenges on the planet. Like uh, smartphones are very, very mature sec uh, security-wise. Uh, there's already very strong uh, mitigations and uh, sandbox models, and it's definitely very. It's it's as far as apart from Web three as you can imagine in terms of maturity, right? Uh, um, so it makes it even a larger challenge and. Uh, it it's also makes it a greater sense of achievement when you do get like some successes on the way. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's very different. Yeah. Um, and how would you say like the difficulty of um, exploiting Android finding zero days um, in that compared to Web3 security? Because obviously like, traditional security is much more mature and um, from my understanding, right, you, you have to be specialized in just one particular part of the exploit chain. And then you've got different people specialized in each part. And you have to really like combine all those parts and all of those parts have to be working to be uh, able to come up with just a one single exploit, right? But in Web3, it's like you, you can just come up with it by yourself. Um, so uh, how would you like compare the difficulty um, of uh, each? Yeah, I mean, you're definitely right about that. Um, there is basically the, the space is much more explored uh, in Web3 from both uh, an offensive and defensive uh, perspective. And that makes it much more of a challenge to do any small like uh, um, breach or privilege escalation, right? So uh, you can have like a team that's all about getting the initial uh, bug that gives you some kind of uh, a buggy behavior in the process. And then you can have another team which gives you uh, like uh, it, and its challenges to get you out of that very restrictive uh, conditions and give you a higher privilege 
maybe even get in, into uh, the root uh, and uh, control like uh, execution from the kernel. Uh, and also like these kind of, these new mitigations that have been introduced in the last uh, three, four years have been extremely hard to solve. You know, uh, you could say that the defenders got much more of a better understanding what, what, what uh, the hackers are using and basically got to the root of the issues. Like what, what, what is giving uh, attackers this uh, extra uh, freedom or um, convenience that can translate a bug to an exploit. And they've kind of uh, introduced some very hard mitigations which stop you early on uh, from doing something meaningful. So I could say that mo I, it's, it's become less and less about bugs. I mean, bugs will always be there, but it's also about like, how do I use this uh, bug to, like, wh what are the different uh, uh, mitigation bypasses that I need to chain uh, to reach this uh, like high, like, uh, control of execution or my uh, target goal. So there is so much more involved. Um, where the, when in Web3, it's extremely logical. And once you're able to do something that you're not supposed to, then usually it, it can lead to uh, a loss of funds or a freeze of funds or uh, some kind of uh, uh, freezing of a smart contract. Uh, so basically the... the um, gap is almost non-existent between the bug and how to use it uh, and it's all about preventing the bugs in the first place in web3 right and yeah it definitely sounds more difficult i mean i mean to me it sounds more difficult um finding a zero day in ios um, for example uh you know just because of how const you know as they release more patches you're more and more constricted in what you're able to do um, and in Web3, it's still very new, I feel, and yeah, new bugs coming out, and then and developers, they're less mature in Web3 um, than compared to you know, iOS, obviously. Yeah, um, I think every time technology is evolving in a rapid pace, it's very good for attackers because, uh, because there's never really maturity. Once something is mature, then something new comes and is the new. Uh, uh, immature uh, technology. So as long as we keep on uh, like inventing new protocols and uh, not uh, stabilizing on a specific uh, uh, protocol, and then it's kind of always going to be like a lot of learning uh, as we go and making mistakes as we go. And that's always gives the hackers opportunity to find it before defenders do. Um, like you can say that Linux kernel is extremely mature and it's it's uh, basically you can see that there is they've continually fixed bugs but even though there there's a lot of bugs are fixed and code is much more mature um, they still introduce new features to the kernel and this the, and and this way um, bugs can be introduced as well so uh, more generally in this uh, software field you we, we kind of don't like to stick with, with what we already have and that's the kind of uh, problem uh, overall with security, right? Because you can't introduce new features without introducing new bugs. And if you stay with the same thing, then like uh, you can't have uh, new features, new optimizations and so on. So it's kind of um, it's a trade-off that we have in software.